elections are often viewed as serious and even dull affairs, where a nation's leaders are carefully and thoughtfully chosen by the electorate. However, throughout the world there have been examples when elections become controversial or just obviously rigged, and even descended into farcical and downright bizarre spectacles. Here are my choices for five of the most bizarre and controversial elections of all time. Number 5. The Turkmenistan Presidential Elections President Niyazov became Turkmenistan's first president following the breakup of the Soviet Union in 1991. As the communist state fell apart, Turkmen officials quickly declared Turkmenistan independent and appointed Niyazov as interim president on October 27, 1991, until democratic Western-style elections could be held to pick a new leader. On June the 21st the next year, supposedly free and fair elections were held to decide who would be the democratically elected leader of the newly born nation. While this may sound modern and democratic, there was one small problem. Niyazov was the only candidate on the ballot and was subsequently elected president with 99.5% of the vote and a voter turnout of 99.8%. He declared himself leader of all Turkmen and two years later a referendum was held which extended his rule through to 2002, supposedly said that he could oversee a 10-year development plan for the country. The official results showed that the referendum granted the extension to his rule with an incredible 99.9% .9 approval rate. This wasn't the end to his election rigging though, and on December 28, 1999, the Parliament of Turkmenistan declared Niyazov president for life, conveniently just weeks after parliamentary elections had been held, during which all candidates on the ballot had been hand-picked by the president. He went on to become one of the world's most totalitarian and eccentric dictators, building a personal wealth rumoured to be upwards of $3 billion, and building a cult of personality throughout the nation, where the old images of Marx and Lenin were replaced with his own. He renamed towns, schools, months of the year, and even a meteorite, after himself and family members, and became infamous for a whole host of bizarre laws and decrees. Dogs were banished from the capital because of their unappealing odour, Opera and ballet was outlawed for being decidedly un turkman like Men were banned from wearing long hair or beards, and news reporters were no longer allowed to wear makeup. He even built a giant gold-plated statue of himself costing $12 million that is mounted on a mechanical axis so that it can rotate and therefore always face the sun. And he ruled the country from a $60 million gold-plated white marble presidential palace. With his death in 2006, there was hope that Turkmenistan might throw off the shackles of dictatorship, its people finally embracing freedom. Gurban Guli Berdi Mukhamadov was appointed acting president, and free and fair elections were promised to be held on February 11, 2007. This time six candidates were on the ballot, however all of them were members of the ruling party, with the leader of the opposition group glaringly absent. Come election day, 95% of voters were reported to have turned out to vote, and unsurprisingly 89.23% of the votes went to acting president Berdi Mukhamadov, who was immediately sworn in as president. Outside observers criticised the election as neither free nor fair, however this did little to dissuade the new president, and at the next elections in 2012, the president was re-elected with a whopping 97% of the vote, a position he still holds to this day. Number 4. Pico Azza the sleepy town of Pico Azza near Ecuador's Pacific coastline doesn't seem like the setting for political controversy. However, the 1967 campaign to elect a mayor has put the small town in the history books. During the election campaign, a deodorant firm seized a clever marketing opportunity and began running political-themed adverts to promote one of their products, a type of foot powder. They used the slogan, Vote for any candidate, but if you want well-being and hygiene, vote for Pulvapis. The day before the election they also distributed leaflets, which closely resembled official voting papers in size and colour, which boldly stated, for mayor, honourable Pulvapis. This marketing strategy proved far more effective than the foot powder manufacturer had anticipated, and on election day many of the town's residents took the message to heart, writing honourable Pulvapis on their ballots, which were right in ballots where voters did not tick their selection from a pre-approved list, but instead wrote in the name of the person they wanted to cast a vote for. Once the votes had been counted, it was revealed that the foot powder had in fact won and been elected mayor, winning over half the votes. The shock result led to threats of legal action against the foot powder company from defeated candidates, however also raised wider reaching issues. While it might seem as though this was a protest vote on the part of the town's residents, many pointed to the low literacy rates in the area, raising the possibility that voters may have mistaken the political-themed foot powder ad 
for a genuine candidate's advertisement, believing that Honourable Paul Vappies was a person, not a foot powder. This argument is further reinforced by the area being so poor, with limited access to clean water, sewer systems, and other public services, and so people may have mistook the slogan, vote for any candidate but if you want well-being and hygiene vote for Paul Vappies, as a candidate's promise to improve local sanitation. Either way, the town was the first, but maybe not the last, to elect a foot powder to political office. Number 3. The State of Vietnam Referendum After the 1954 Geneva Conference, Vietnam gained independence from France, but was split between the Communist North and Capitalist South. The State of Vietnam controlled the South, pending elections which were supposed to unify the country under one government. The referendum of 1955 was supposed to determine the future form of the government, and was contested between Prime Minister Diem, who wanted South Vietnam to stay separated from the Communist North, and the former Emperor Bao Dai, who was now the head of state. Diem's anti-communist stance earned him the backing of the United States, who feared the spread of communism to the South. From the outset, the election campaign was anything but fair, and descended into a circus of publicity stunts and slandering. The former Emperor was forbidden from even campaigning, and Prime Minister Diem used the army, police and media to launch personal attacks on the opposition. Police would go door to door warning people of the consequences of failing to vote for Diem, and organised rallies in rural villages where the local residents were addressed via loudspeaker. Prime Minister Diem used every tool available to him to portray the former emperor in a negative light. He was presented as a drunken and immoral womaniser who had little concern for the plight of Vietnam's people, Giant carnival-style floats were paraded through the streets of Saigon, showing the head of state with bags of money on his shoulders, alcohol in his hands, and naked blonde women draped over his body, in an effort to show him as a gambling womanizer with a taste for European women, who was in the pockets of the hated French. Posters were plastered all over the city with slogans describing Dai as the evil king, and calling those who might vote for him, traitors to their country and the press printed endless unsubstantiated scandals and stories about him, all while Dai was given no chance to defend himself, having even been banned from entering the country. Prime Minister Diem on the other hand was portrayed as the hero of the people, and a man who would bring justice and prosperity to the country, while fighting monarchists, communists and colonialists. Even Dai's wife was attacked, and even though she was ethnically Vietnamese, she was a French citizen and therefore accused of being an agent of France, even the election itself was stacked against Dai. Ballots for Diem were printed in red, which was traditionally associated with good luck and prosperity, while ballots for Dai were printed in green, a colour which in Vietnam was associated with bad luck and being a cuckold. Voters would have to place their chosen ballot in the box while publicly discarding the other, meaning that their choice was not secret, leaving them open to intimidation and threats, with those voting green being beaten and having pepper sauce stuffed into their nostrils, once the votes were counted, it came as no surprise that Prime Minister Diem won with a landslide 98.2% of the vote. The farcical nature of the election was highlighted when Diem won 605,000 votes in Saigon, despite only 450,000 registered voters living in the city. Three days later, Diem named himself President of the New Republic of Vietnam and set about securing his absolute control of the country. Number 2. North Korea 2014 as strange as it might seem, elections are actually held in North Korea, however they are anything but democratic, and in true North Korean style, are just another way to intimidate and spy upon their own citizens. Elections for the North Korean Supreme People's Assembly are usually held every five years, and the election of 2014 was the first since Kim Jong-un took over from his late father, Kim Jong-il. Voting is mandatory, and age or illness is no reason to abstain. If you're unable to attend the polling station, mobile ballot boxes will be sent to your home, and only those citizens not present in the country are excused. The run-up to election day is treated as a patriotic celebration, and on the day itself, voters are presented with a single candidate's name for their constituency, which they must either tick to approve, or mark with a red pen and place in a separate ballot box to reject. The candidate is of course pre-selected by the Workers' Party, and abstaining or rejecting the chosen candidate is a dangerous proposition. The separate ballot box where votes against the candidates are placed is in full view of election officials, and such an act of defiance is likely to land you and your family in serious trouble, as a no vote is seen as an act of treason against the state. 
it's no surprise that with such high stakes, the 2014 election returned a 100% approval rate for candidates, with a 99.97% voter turnout. So why does North Korea bother with elections that are so obviously a sham? According to defectors, the election provides a golden opportunity to conduct a census on its people, with local officials monitoring who shows up and who doesn't. This highlights anyone who might have illegally left the country, placing their family in lethal danger, which discourages others from escaping the country. The elections also give authorities a chance to test their mobilization skills, check up on internal movements of people, and generally drill local leaders in the art of mustering large numbers of people, a skill that might prove useful in times of war. Number 1. Yonna During the 2010 Reykjavik City Council elections, a local comedian named Yon Na, who had recently formed his own political party, decided to stand for office. He had formed his party, which was given the name Best Party, to use as a platform to mock and satirise the politicians who had been at the heart of Iceland's earlier economic meltdown, which was largely caused by politicians colluding with irresponsible banking practices. Some of Best Party's campaign pledges included building a Disneyland at the city's airport, installing a polar bear display at the zoo, a drug-free parliament by 2020, and free towels at all public swimming pools. The party even promised to break any and all promises they had made. The party's slogan summed up their disdain for the establishment, stating, We promise to stop corruption, we'll accomplish this by participating in it openly. The party was largely formed of non-politicians, and from the outset they were treated as nothing more than a joke and a protest vote. Politicians and the media mocked and ridiculed Na, and he suffered accusations that he was making Iceland a laughing stock on the world stage. Following a terrible performance at a TV debate, it seemed as if the party was finished. However, their poll numbers continued to climb, despite the entire establishment seemingly out to get them. Come election day, the best party won the most seats on the council, winning 6 of the 15 seats and obtaining 34.7% of the vote. As the largest party, they could now pick the city's mayor, and unsurprisingly, Na was the man they chose. Against all the odds, a massive backlash against the country's politicians had carried the comedian and his unorthodox party into public office. Taken aback by the victory, he now faced the job of running the city, a task which would require coalitions with other political parties. He announced that he would not enter partnership with anyone who hadn't watched the TV series The Wire. However, despite such public jokes, he actually performed well as mayor. Difficult decisions were made in order to tackle the city's ruined finances, Electricity prices were raised, along with other unpopular but necessary changes, and opposition parties worked with him as they recognised that such changes were essential. Despite such newfound responsibilities, he never lost his comedic touch, and would later appear in his official role as mayor in drag at the city's gay pride parade, as well as posting a Christmas holiday greeting video, wearing a Darth Vader mask and Santa Claus cap. So there are my choices for five of the most bizarre and controversial elections in history. As always, let me know what you thought and what other strange elections you would have included in the list in the comments below, and I'll see you again on the next video.